Hey, Andrew. How are you doing? It's um, December the 15th. 2013. What does a date matter anyway? This is going to probably be my worst video ever. And um, going by the number of views I get on my videos, it's going downhill. Even though I speak the truth and some things I know I'm right about and I want to shout so everyone can hear me, that's pretty difficult. I don't have a massive megaphone that will stretch all the way around the world. So I've got my YouTube channel. And I guess even if one or two other people listen to the whole video and pick up some of my truth, then it's worth doing. And it's even worth doing for my own record. So, first of all, I'm going to say, what does date matter anyway? And uh, people have asked me before what, you know, what I have in my cigarettes. Well, in this one, it's just some normal solids, cannabis solids. The skunk these days is gone over into the realms of the chemicals. I think a lot of the reasons people like cannabis is because it's natural. It's something, that's certainly why I like it, because God put it here. God or the intelligent universe enabled cannabis to be here. And I have walked into practically an eight foot high, eight foot wide cannabis tree in the middle of Uganda it was there naturally and it was amazing <laughs> so yeah I like to keep it natural like I say the skunk these days people use too many chemicals we've heard about the synthetic weed where they just use potpourri or something and soak it in chemicals and, that, and that's obviously not good so yeah I'm smoking on video today which I wouldn't normally be doing not recently anyway but with so few views I just don't give a fuck and I might swear as well anyway so um, Bilderberg this is some undone stuff which I don't like being left undone and this is what I mean I want to shout about this the Bilderberg uh, protest and I did a video Bilderberg protest is a setup and we've got the most views of any of my videos, just over 500. And my fear was that something would happen on the Saturday night. The fear was that there the Bilderbergs, safely in their house, and in this fringe festival, which was so kindly set up by who knows who, and they allowed it, right? And you've got these uh, lunatics in the Bilderberg group who seem to love sacrificing children or whatever. <clears throat> and in a field right next to them, you've got your, you've got their enemies, the ones who are. Uh, come in to protest against them and shout about it, right? They're enemies in a field. Now, if you go back to the videos of Bilderberg, you've got um, Alex Jones at about 7 o'clock or something in the evening, and it's still light because it was in the summer, Going, I'm going back to the hotel now. I've got a BBC interview in the morning. And it was true. His BBC interview in the morning was the one when he was shouting his head off and was very entertaining. It was very good. And um, and his uh, 
what do you call him? It's Klinger on the other the other guy, the English guy. I don't know what his name is, I can't remember. But he was clinging on with Alex Jones. He was like Alex is Jones UK guy. And he's saying, no, I'm, if someone asks him on the video, are you are you staying for the party? Right? He said, no, I've got to get back. Big in, interview tomorrow. Well, Alex Jones did that, but he didn't. Then, the last video I saw from Bilderberg was a guy, and it was called getting chucked out of Bilderberg. Now he didn't actually get chucked out. He walked out, but then he wanted to go back in. And there were all these cops, different type cops with the blue caps. And they were all standing around very surely, not letting anyone back in. And they were very plain, right, no, you've gone out, you're not coming back in. So, and I haven't seen any videos of anything of Saturday night. And I've tried to ask on YouTube, no one's answered. What happened? What happened afterwards? So for all we know, all the people left in there, staying for the party, could have been done away with. Gassed. Could have been gassed. Could have been gassed. <laughs> so if anyone knows any different, if anyone knows anyone who stayed inside, and what about the guy who couldn't get back in, he was the last one to leave, possibly. I don't know if any free drugs were going around. They could have been drugged. I just, um, I don't like leaving things undone, you know, and that to me feels undone. It feels like we haven't got the answers to that. Okay, so let's get some answers. But the next thing I wanted to talk about was um, Hopi Prophecy. Now I like this. You should look it up. There's some good videos on Hopi Prophecy. Now, the one I just watched was from the 70s, and they were pretty sure that, you know, that it was going to come then, that the Enlightenment or whatever was going to come back then. And they may have been close, and maybe it happened for a few, but it didn't happen. Doesn't mean to say it won't. Maybe we have to be ultra patient. Maybe be another 50 years, another 100 years. I don't know. I don't think so. I went through Nostradamus' prophecies when I was about 19, 18. I went through the whole book and I wrote them all out. I was looking for a pattern. Because if you read Nostradamus, it's very unclear. And there's these quatrains, and you hear what other people thought these predictions were. And <clears throat> I think the um, the Hitler one, where it says Hisla, which is only one letter out. That's close. Hisla, not Hitler. But he also he had um, <coughs> said about the things flying in the sky <clears throat> and men wearing pig masks. And if you think of someone who was in a World War Two aeroplane and the masks they would have worn, you know, you can definitely think pig masks. You know, if someone from the 15th century had never seen these things before, what might he call them? So I think there's, you know, I think Nostradamus was succeeding in his divination. He, I think the word is Mabus. Anyway, that was my point. 
My point was the timing. I can't remember why, but some clear in my in my mind. I've got down the year 2047 as the time when everything will be okay again. I can wait that long, I think. I can wait that long for when everything's going to be okay again. I guess I'm just a bit impatient as to when all the shit's going to start. Although you could say the shit as well already started. I think 2009 was a clear date for that, but going back as well. Um, <clears throat> so, I don't know on timing particularly, but 2047 has a date for coming all good. So anyway, the Hopis, the Hopi prophecy, and the Hopis of this uh, Red Indian tribe, and he said something about way back like 10,000 years ago <coughs> the human beings the good human beings from the four corners of the earth were given these stone tablets and something about there's information on these stone tablets which they have to keep keep safe um, otherwise some bad stuff would happen but basically, what he was saying, I don't know why he called the West Indians in America, he said they were from the, that was the south part. So I don't know what the northeast and west seems a bit screwed up on there. So I'm just going to say what it is. So in the west, you've got the Red Indians. They're the red people. And they their tablets are all concerned with earth. And like he said, they know like herbs and stuff like that comes from the ground they have that knowledge healing people with herbs and stuff like that and other earthly knowledge and then you got people in the east and there this would be in tibet and apparently all these were in mountainous areas these four corners of the earth and then tibet <coughs> the east now they had the knowledge concerning air if you think about all their meditation techniques and breathing and stuff like that, that is the knowledge of the air. And he said the people in the north, the white people, and it's in the mountains of Switzerland, and they had the knowledge of fire. And if you look at what the white people have done, guns include fire, car engine is fire, jet engine is fire, rocket is fire. A light bulb fire so they had the knowledge of fire and used it to to do <laughs> damage all over the earth and he said there are people in the south in the Mount Kenya that area and they had the knowledge of water and he did say something about their knowledge of water but I have no idea what that is. So I'd really like to find out. Because I think I have quite a good grasp on the other three. But the water one. I don't think that's... I'm not sure that's come out. And I'm wondering if it has something to do with telepathy. Because all water is connected. But then we're going into the realms of the air thing telepathy meditation but it could be water because there's something about water all being connected if I just said that something and you know we are made of water and our brains are a lot of water but I, I don't know I'd like to know that that may complete the puzzle and be illuminated so if anyone has any ideas please share um, Right, now this third thing I'm going to talk about, I thought I had a, <clears throat> well I did, I definitely did, I broke new realms in meditation, 
Now, if you want to look, you can see I've done a video before saying, see the light. And it starts with this. So you meditate, you relax, you close your eyes. You look for a source of light in your mind. And when you do this, and you start to see it, that in my opinion is God, is the creator of the universe, the light, see the light. Anyway, watch my video on that. So then what I was doing, I was meditating, I might as well just slip in now. I think when you meditate and see the light or whatever, it's never the same twice. And I think that's what can prove it to you, that it's real. Things don't happen the same way twice. Even Aslan said that <laughs> in the Narnia books. And I think that's good. And I think it's amazing that, you know, it can be so varied. Anyway, so this, um, the other day, and when I close my eyes and I see the light and I start to feel a kind of a tingle around here on my nose. And it really feels like I'm making a connection with God. And by the way, if I've spoken to God about anything, he always makes me laugh. He's kind of just, I just feel more uplifted afterwards. Even like speaking to my ancestors as well. It's always sort of uplifting um, thoughts, you know, and not being so serious and taking things more lightly. So I guess that's good. Um, yeah, like when I ask about Nibiru, they say Nibahu. <laughs> Nibahu. <laughs> so, yeah, I just don't know. Maybe they're just toying with me. Maybe it's called something else. Maybe it just doesn't exist. We'll wait and see. Anyway, so what I was doing, uh, I was feeling this sort of buzzing around the nose. And then, for some reason, I got the idea to let God into me no first of all I was I felt like God was here you know as he always is anyway he's always everywhere I don't know why I call him a he because I don't think he's a he or a man or anything as I've said before but anyway I was like letting him go through my house and seeing all the things in my house I was being open you know I've got this here that there this here that there you can look at it and then I had the idea letting him into me and it did feel like I could well I just imagined it like the Holy Ghost or whatever the smoke coming into me and, and going into different areas of my body and checking out my body out see if it's okay and there's some areas where I need some healing and balding and <laughs> but while you're here see if you can do anything about my balding please and then I like I've done that. I feel like I had a really strong... Because sometimes when I do this, it feels like if I twitch my head or move something, it could go away. But this felt like a really well-established connection. And... I thought I can take it further. And what I did is the feeling here on my nose, and I could kind of feel it in my eyes and the side here a bit as well. I kind of concentrated it all together and pushed it all up to where my third eye would be. And when I, as I did that, what I was seeing behind my eyelids of like, was increasing colours and yeah, and stronger feelings, and it was really cool. And it did feel like initially I had to really like push. Like someone said before, Natalie Sudevi, she said, you know, to open this pineal gland, you, it's like a rust, the door hinges are rusty, and you've got to give it a bit of a push, and then poof, it'll open. And it kind of did feel like that, like I was forcing it open. And it was definitely stronger. It was, it was cool, really cool. And I recommend anyone to try it it's quite good um, 
Yeah, and then, like, I didn't think I'd be able to do it again the next day or even a couple of days after. Because when I've done things like this before, when I first had feelings like a hand on my head and stuff like that, then, you know, it would be a week maybe or a few days until I could get that again. It's almost like you've, you've used up, you've got to recharge recharge whatever it is your chakras recharge your chakras or something <clears throat> so I did I think that what I did there was <clears throat> if it's not Christ consciousness I don't know I think it's very close um, and <clears throat> I didn't have to do any chanting I didn't have to say anybody's name I didn't have to say anything out loud if anyone tells you to say anything out loud or chant repeated, that is brainwashing. And maybe they'd argue you need to brainwash to unbrainwash. And they probably, you could argue that a bit. But I don't believe in chanting. I don't believe in saying things a hundred times. That is brainwashing. So you can achieve this just with your mind. Don't feel you need to do too much ceremony because that's probably just bullshit I'm a bit suspicious now about the name Jesus after all it I mean the words Jesus said were awesome you know I have lived my life it is true the guide to happiness is through charity it's so true you do feel happy when you've done something good for someone. It is absolutely true. So Jesus' words are sacred and they mustn't be taken away. But I do wonder about the name. And I wonder about the word Amen as well. Is this giving power to the bad people? But anyway, I don't want to go there now. Um, I think I'm done really with what I was saying. Am I? Ah, Donna! Yeah, that'll do. Sorry for this horrible video. I mean, I know my videos, there may be the odd little gems in my videos. I know they're not very entertaining. I haven't put a lot of effort into them. I just like to do it as quick as possible, really. Um, and for all I care, people, people may as well just shut the lid and listen. There's sometimes the videos I like like that, and I know that I know we're not going to get much visuals, so I can just shut the lid and listen, or do something else on the computer while they're glittering away. So maybe you can do that, right? Anyway, I think I've said enough. Okay, bye. <laughs>